deep dive into Pond's Labyrinth. This tutorial requires intermediate skills, takes about two hours to prep and about an hour and a half to apply. If you do SFX makeup on a regular basis, you probably already have what you need. If you're starting from zero, most of the money will go into latex, bolt caps and a little bit of Elemorph plastic. And there we got the Elemorph plastic, pouring it into hot water. Make sure those pellets turn clear. And of course, we are going to create the little eyes. For this, you can also use cotton balls, just like we did in the Ryuk tutorial. We split that ball in two and create those little eyes. They are sort of half eyes because they're not gonna be round. They are inside our hands. All right, when those eyes are ready, put them to the side, let them cool off. And then we continue with the basic hand prosthetics. We're gonna push down those eyes straight into a gooey mess of liquid latex and flour that we are mixing here. Always mix a little flour at a time until you get a gooey consistency like this. Yummy! We scoop it up in two, because we have two hands of course, and there is additional latex. We use that on our fingertips to smooth out the surface. Now we want to push that latex out on the sides, a long way out, because that's gonna be flappy skin to attach it with onto our hands. Leave a thicker mass in the center and then push down those eyes we just created. Straight down, no fuss. And to make sure they really stick in place when that latex dries up, we need to sort of push that edge over the eye like that. Push it in there, locking it in place. With our hand eye prosthetics ready, leave them to dry overnight and we continue with the face. We begin by adding large chunks of clay, any kind of clay, and this is because we want to be able to blink and breathe behind that mask. We don't want that mask to be slap on super tight onto the face, so give it a little room. And again, turning to liquid latex paste. Smear it on, liquid latex on the fingertip, and then smooth this surface out. And of course, find yourself a nice reference image of the pale man, so that you know what kind of shapes you have to do. With the basic shape in place, it's time to create the holes for the eyes. And we are using a brush handle here. Roll it in liquid latex, that's very important or it's gonna stick way too much. Push it all the way in there and we spin that handle a little bit as we pull it out. Just to make sure it doesn't stick. But you really want it to go straight through here because these are the holes you'll be looking out through. We smooth out the edges a bit before continuing with the lower jaw. And it's the same process all over again but a different shape. Since we want this mask in one piece, we need to connect the lower and the upper part. We do that with additional latex paste, just like this. And again, leave this to dry overnight. If you want to dress up like no one else at that Halloween party, check out our fun and quirky Halloween looks playlist. Super fun and weird creations. One day later, we are back with our face prosthetic. And now it's time to create those flappy skin pieces hanging off the side of the face there. We are gonna be using wire. We make a hole in the mask. Push the wire in there. Make sure it sticks. We can also use a little bit of tape there to give it some help. There we go. Now we cover that U-shape in tape. Any kind of tape you got. And that tape will then be the base on which we will apply more liquid latex paste. 
There is a lot of that going around in this tutorial. Four flaps on each side, there we go. Going from large to small. We add the latex paste and connect it to the rest of our dried up prosthetic. Make sure you fill out any gaps and smear it upwards to really connect it. And don't forget the inside as well. Of course this is a process that takes a while so be patient. But soon enough you'll have something looking like this. There we go. Time for that last little one. Before leaving it to dry, we add a little bit of a cheekbone here on the side. There we go. Then again we left this to dry overnight. Quite the project. Another day has passed and it's time to paint that prosthetic. And we begin with a base coat of foundation. Basically all over the mask. After that we switch to water based colors and a large brush. Now we're gonna flick on the paint for a more organic feel. And we start off with a red tone here around the eyes, the mouth and the temples. Flick it on. This is also a process that takes a while. With the first coat on, switching to a much lighter tone here. Almost a yellow beige. Same process, flicking it on, giving it a much more natural and organic feel and texture. With all that wet paint on the mask, we need a little drying session. Next up, detail work with dark purple tone around the eyes and in those sockets as well. For that spooky albino look, we stipple that color down under the eyes as well and mix that in with a red. We use the same technique to add details on the edges of the flaps as well as around the mouth. With the red detailing in place, it's time to make sure things don't look too painted on. So we once again head back to that light bright beige tone and give it one more layer of flicking. And the shout goes to SFX D Alban. This freaky dude does a lot of fun stuff. Go check it out. There are yeah, the, the, like yeah, a loose leg there, for instance. Go check it out. Turning our eyes to the uh, yeah eyes, and we stipple on a mix of a bright beige tone along with a red. To bring out the eyes, we also need to line that little edge of the eye with a black. And of course, a red iris. All finished, time to peel them off. For that we need a brush and some powder, because that powder is going to make sure the latex doesn't stick to itself when we peel it off. So apply it as you peel. Because if it sticks to itself, it's going to be a mess to untangle it. So 
make sure you use ample amounts of that powder. And of course, with the eyes off, we trim the edges a little bit. Don't trim too much though, because we want a large area when we stick it to the palm of our hand later. Then we'll repeat that process again with all that powder and peel the mask off gently. When it's off, clean out the holes for the eyes as well as the mouth. I think it looks like a droid from Star Wars, this too, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. There it comes off, goody goody. For those dark nasty nails, we are using a very very simple concept. We simply wrap our fingertips in aluminium foil, make one for each finger and keep them in order for later, because you want the right one for the right finger. Then it's time, yup, to put that mask on, but hey Ellie, hello, yeah. Take away the hair, that's better. All right, so a little bit of Vaseline or oil in the hairline. Actually, it doesn't seem to be needed here because that ball cap is way down there. Anyways, can never be too certain. We need to hear and we need ears, so we cut out a little incision there, like that. Ellie, as usual, attaches that bulk cap using liquid latex. If you are more comfortable with the skin adhesive, go for that. Speed to dry the whole thing with a blow dryer. And yep, you guessed it. Time to give that head the same kind of look and texture as the mask. I have a rubber hat on my head in Scanian is Yao Hao and Gumi had way with And we make sure that goes down over our chest a little bit. And as you know, that flappy skin continues down on the neck. Same kind of concept as those flappy pieces on the face prosthetic. For us, this tutorial was mainly about creating that awesome mask. So we did not go insanely in depth on creating the flappy skin on the chest here. But hey, if you want to, you can go full on Jordan Hahn's body paint mania. And if you have no clue who Jordan Hans is, I'm gonna put a link right there in the top corner for you to check out. I'm stippling color all over my chest in Swedish is... Jag duter färg över hela mitt bröst. Wrapping up that chest with a round of flicking with that beige and red. Before it's time to apply that mask, we add a little thin coat of white hairspray color there on the edge and then apply that exact same color onto our skin, just where that mask is gonna be sitting. To match things up a little better. Right, so let's prep our eyes, peeling those falsies off and painting our eyelids and the area around our eyes with black, because when the mask is on, we don't want that super bright skin tone of ours to be visible in those holes. The total darkness. There you go. You will be able to see out, of course, but you can only basically see straight out. So it's gonna look real funny now after Ellie has uh, applied the mask, which she is doing, by the way, with the liquid latex around the edge. And again, you can use a skin adhesive if you are more comfortable with that. 
apply the mask, push down all the edges, make sure it's there, line up those eyes and the mouth. And we go in with additional red there to sync up our lip color with a mask. Flicking on more color here to match things up. Did not turn out a hundred percent. But it's kind of tricky when you can just look straight forward. Adding additional red there on the ears, on the neck. Detailing. Polishing up a little around the eyes with that nice purple. Give those eyes an extra boost. Red around our mouth and a little, little bit of blood as well. Don't want to go overboard here, just, just a tad. Hands and arm time and we go with that white hairspray color on our arms. We also of course add that additional red. Give the same tonality as we have on the rest of the creation. Next up, slapping those eyes into the palms of our hands. And of course we are using liquid latex to apply those prosthetics. Rich amount. Put it in place right there, align the eye. Make sure there are no loose flappy edges that can get stuck in things. And then add an additional coat of latex around that edge to give your hand and that prosthetic the same kind of texture. Then we prep 10 little pieces of tape, spray paint our fingers in that nice red shade, and then put on those little tips. Like that, wrap it around the base with a piece of tape. This is surgical tape or skin tape. And to paint these tips black and to get a nice fade out of the black tone down onto the hand, we are using black hairspray color. And we want to avoid a sharp edge there between the black and the rest of the hand, so we keep it at a fair distance there, giving us a nice fade out. And hey, then you're done! There we go, the Pale Man from Pan's Labyrinth. And this is also one of those looks that have been requested so many times. We hope you liked how this turned out. Give it a thumbs up if you did and please share this all over the internet because as you know, the more people watching this, the easier it gets for us to create this and still afford our rent. See you in three or four days with another mad tutorial. Love you, bye.